So I got a few questions for you. Do you actually need concrete for the walls of your natural swimming pond? Or can you dig at a structurally sound angle? Or what about how do you have an elevated bog filter filtering your natural swimming pond that you can create a beautiful waterfall from? And what in the world do you put underneath your pond liner to help protect it from punctures. Well, I'll cover this and more, so make sure and watch this video. Welcome to the Natural Sun Pond and that ranch. So I have about a 25 by 50 foot long natural swimming pond. And so when we excavated it, we dug this out at a two to one ratio. That's, that's what's structurally sound, right? So two foot out, one foot deep. Because remember, I have no rebar, I have no concrete, I have no block, I have no stone, nothing like that for the sides. It's at an angle instead of vertical walls for my swimming pond. I saved a bunch of money doing it this way. So two to one ratio as you dig. And all of this right here, this dirt, we excavated all and put on this mound. So the bog filter can rest on top of the mound. This was not a mound before, this is just level dirt, level ground right here. The bog is about seven and a half by 12 and a half and 12 inches deep. You really don't want a bog filter that is more than 12 inches deep. If there's no fish, it's about 10 to 20% of your, your size of your, your swimming pond. And if there is fish, then you really want to do about 25 to 30% of your pond size for the bog filter. I have the main swimming part is only about five feet deep, okay? And then it has, gets shallower down over there. And then down at the other end, I have this other plant area in pots though. And that is just a kind of waiting area and a spot that you can get into the pond over there. So you could just rest your feet in there or put some plants and pots over there for more filtration on that end. So that is the main dig, right? So I had the excavator come dig out that main pond and put that mound over here. And then I went around, dig by hand, forming how I want the shape in the inside. And I also formed that bog filter. So all around what you're gonna need to do just do it, I just did it by hand, is you wanna do a trench. So you wanna do a trench all along the perimeter of your pond. You're gonna to wanna to dig a one foot by one foot. So one foot out, one foot deep at least. A hole, a trench, all along the perimeter of your pond. That way, when you get the underlayment and you get the liner, you just curl that in the trench, backfill that with that dirt and rock you filled, and then compact that. And that's what really stabilizes your liner so it's not going everywhere. So you definitely want to build a trench. Actually, the only spot that you don't have a trench because when you get the liner, when you calculate it, which hopefully we could talk about in the next video, you want the bog and the waterfall section and the main pond section, all one liner. You wanna calculate that as one liner, not two, not two, but one, okay? So all along the perimeter of trench, except right here. So this is actually the only spot is these, this is all one liner from my main pond all the way up to my bog. I did a little shelf here and I did not do any trench. Why? Because I'm not putting the liner in the trench because it's going up the waterfall, right? So this section right here, just make a shelf to put these big boys on and create stacking your, your waterfall rock. But that's the only part you do not need a trench. Another thing, that is super vital you're gonna come especially when the the rains come is you want to make sure it is level so you want to make sure that your pond your edges are level you don't want this lower than that side to that side higher lower and all over the place because once those rains come you're gonna see that man that low side is just gonna flood and topple over and 
erode that land, all that stuff, right? It's just gonna be ugly. So get it all level. So they have laser levelers. So you could have laser and, and just make that level. Or if it's a smaller pond, you could just do literally like a metal pipe or a straight wood and put a leveler on it and see if that end and that end is level. Just make sure as you dig, the edges are level. Another thing that you really want to consider is the type of underlayment you're going to have. So as you dig, again, like I said, my, my pond is over a ton of rock. My house is like built on rock. So it made it really hard to excavate and dig. But anyways, you want, as you dig, you want to prepare your underlayment. And how you do that is make sure there's no rock. So get the rake, literally get a rake, and start raking the rocks. Any sharp edges, anything that might be sharp, anything that might damage your liner. You don't wanna have sleepless nights thinking, oh, is that too sharp? Is that gonna, my liner gonna rip? Or whatever that, you just get that out, do your prep work, and rake those rocks out, okay? After you dig, you do your form you want, make sure those rocks. If there's boulders underneath that are coming, Get your sledgehammer and bash those, right? Or jackhammer them and make it smooth. Smooth as you can before the underlayment. And once you do that, once you do and get ready with the rake, you're gonna want to get your underlayment. Underlayment meaning the thing that goes over the dirt before the pond liner to protect that pond liner. So you want that pond liner. I actually got, I'll, I'll describe more of the pond liner, what I got, but I got like 45 mil RPE liner, which is super strong. They say you don't even really need an underlayment, but I even did an underlayment, a, a stout underlayment actually as well. Cause I just don't want that, you know, sleepless nights thinking, is it gonna puncture? Anyways, there's several types of underlayments. I've heard of people having s newspaper as an underlayment. I don't really get that. <laughs> that doesn't really seem like too efficient. You got, underlayments that they sell you could the company you buy from they they usually sell underlayments that are cheaper than the liner but still you're gonna have to buy that and so i chose not to do that to save some money there's sand people on top of that dirt do a layer of sand my line of thinking is well if you got a slope how are you gonna have that like sand not slope down, I mean, and how thick the sand you're gonna need. And you're gonna spend a lot more money and transportation and all that of having the sand, ugh, it's a mess. So I chose not to do sand. So what I chose to do was carpet, a carpet underlayment. So I called up a carpet company that was local and they had a dumpster in their back filled with carpet that they did from jobs that were old from jobs that they were just gonna throw out. Actually, a lot of it was good carpet. Not that I recommend putting the old carpet in your house, that's kind of gross, but underneath the pond liner, you don't, you don't have to worry about it. It's not like gonna stink up your pond or anything like that. It's all good. That's what I did. I did carpet liner. Some of it that was thinner carpet, I even doubled that on the dirt, and I love it. So just regular side, the fluffy side of the carpet uh, up, and then the rough side down, lay that, on the as much as you can no rock dirt and then you're ready for your pond liner so make sure and join me on the next video as we go more in depth on the type different types of pond liners and the pond liner that i personally chose to use and i'm very grateful i chose to use it and also i want to kind of cover a very important aspect of building the pond the overflow pipe which is underneath my my little bridge over there I want to go into the depth on that a little bit. So join me, stay tuned.